Alright, hello and welcome back to another Hero House Reviews. Today we're doing another member of the Spider-Man Far From Home Marvel Legends wave, this one being Scorpion. Now, Scorpion is an enigma of a character to me, because I don't think I've ever read a comic book with him in it, but I just love the character. Something about his aesthetic really appeals to me, and I'm, yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, growing up I had what was, you know, the ultimate guide to Spider-Man, where they brought up Scorpion and said he was like the first villain Spider-Man faced who was physically stronger than he was. And I don't know why that ingrained itself in my mind, and why that made him appeal to me so much, but as soon as I saw he had a figure coming out in this wave, I was just like, I gotta get that. Don't even know why. And like, looking at his design, there's nothing about it that screams, you know, he's so cool. It's just a dude in a green suit with a scorpion tail. But the sculpt seems to be well done here. When I get him out, that might change, but as things stand, like, he looks good. His tail is great. That's so long. And I'm guessing there's wire or something in there so that can be moved. Well, at least I am very much hoping that to be the case. Otherwise, no accessories, which is a bit of a bummer, but if the tail is well done enough, like, then you can understand the lack of accessories, and it comes with Multiman's leg. Not gonna get the whole wave. None of the other characters, like, appeal to me on any level. I've, like, you've got two Spider-Men. You've got Spider-Man in his new Spider-Man costume, and then Stealth Spider-Man, which just looks like a cheaper Spider-Man noir without the badass trench coat. Anyway, packaging. Five out of five, Marvel Legends, always done. Cool artwork. What's his little bit of flavor text here? In order to track down Spider-Man, Mac Gargan, that's a great villain name. He just sounds, you know, this is a man who's made mistakes in his life. Undergoes an experimental procedure to fuse his body with an animal, becoming the super-powered criminal, Scorpion. I guess you've got that dichotomy in that scorpions and spiders are both arachnids, so you'd hope for, like, Scorpion would be maybe a bigger part of Spider-Man's rogue gallery, and if he was the first villain who was, like, stronger than Spider-Man, they could have sort of, you know, played up on that. But I don't think he's ever been a huge part of Spider-Man's rogue gallery, or even the Marvel Universe as a whole. I mean, he was fused with the Venom symbiote for a while, and in that time achieved nothing. Literally nothing, except getting destroyed, I think, by every character he came across. Anyway, I digress. Let's open him up and see what all the fuss is about. Is there fuss? I think it's a bit early in the game to say fuss. Uh, I feel this has been a fairly well-received wave from what I've read, but then again, it's also a fairly new wave, so maybe not many people have gotten him. So, we'll see. We will see. He also comes with the instruction booklet slash warning slash not sure what it is. But anyway, here he is, semi-freed, usual drill. I will get him out and we'll go from there. One moment. Alrighty, here we are and we are back. Now, straight out of the gate, the tail is impressive. It is huge. It is long. It looks deadly. It's sculpted all the way through and does have a metal wire in it so you can adjust the positioning. Scorpion looks fantastic. He's got that nice sheen to him. You know, sort of intricate detailing going all along the costume. His face is expressive. He looks very snide. But, with great tail comes great balance struggles, because this thing probably weighs on its own as much as the rest of the figure. So, you know, it's tricky to get a balance, and the wire doesn't hold the shape quite as well as you would hope. And it's something that down the line, you just know if you over use that, you know, trick, he is going to end up with a snapped or broken tail. Like, to be fair, he's standing pretty well with that position, where he's got most of that head weight. Uh, there it goes. So, stood somewhat well. Maybe I could have positioned him better. Plus, again, he's balancing on subpar cardboard. Now, maybe if I lean him back a bit more... 
No, no, it just keeps falling back. Uh, well, there. As you can see, he's an alright figure. Again, I'm not blown away. I'm not disappointed. I didn't know what I was expecting with him. Scorpion just holds that strange allure to me. And he's got the big old tail. And he looks like... Scorpion. No accessories, which is a bummer. He could have used with some extra hands. Maybe, I know, some poison from the tail. Something to just make him a bit more wow. As it is, Hydro Man stands as the superior of the two. To me, at least. Because he's a much more unique sculpt. And more expression. So, maybe Scorpion can get the 3.5 that Hydro Man was initially going to receive. Yeah. I'd say 3.5 seems fair, because he's not a bad figure, he's just not a great one. He's sort of smack bang in the middle, apart from a nice sculpt, and you know, they tried with the tail. I can just see that breaking so easily down the line, you know, you just... And maybe a stand or something to support its weight would have been good, but then Marvel Legends I think very, very rarely include stands, these days at least. Anyway, on to pictures. <laughs> Alright folks, and there you have it, Marvel Legends Far From Home Scorpion. Again, very fun to play with, not going to bump him up like I did Hydro Man. He's good, but not good enough to merit a 4. So I'd still recommend him if you're a fan of the character, or if he adds a strange allure to you as well, or if you want to complete your Sinister 6 or whatever. Definitely worth it, you know, you're not going to regret buying him. So. A solid 3.5 figure. Um, I'm just wondering what members of the Sinister Six are left to sort of... What Spider-Man villains don't have a figure at the moment? Uh, Rhino, I think, was a builder figure recently. Which makes sense, Rhino's very big, but that means, you know, people are unlikely to have him. Hobgoblin had a one fairly recently. I don't know. Are they running out of Spider-Man villains to make figures for? Or are we just going to get sort of like repaints and reissues? I mean, Red Goblin got a figure. So they're clearly, you know, digging into the more abstract characters. What Spider-Man villain would you like to see made into a figure? I guess that's all I can ask. Yeah. Do you have any figures you would like to see? Other than that, thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more, we have plenty of other reviews. We have Hero House, where you can see the action figures in action, and we have the still yet unnamed stop motion fight section. So again, if you've got a good name for that, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you again. Thank you for watching, and all the best. Bye!